Hi, I'm Ethan, a hopeful future software engineer with dreams as big as the code I plan to write. Before I dive into my story, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel for more tales of resilience and recovery. Now, let's get into it. As I leafed through college brochures on my desk, the excitement was extreme. I had been coding since I was 12, and nothing was going to stop me from getting into one of the top tech schools in the country. My parents always promised they'd support my dreams. That college fund tucked away since my first birthday was supposed to be my golden ticket. Mom, Dad, I've narrowed it down to my top three schools. I'll need to start applying for scholarships soon, but it's good to know the college fund has got the rest covered, right? I asked one evening over dinner, my voice filled with a mix of nervousness and excitement. There was a pause, heavy enough to fill the room with an invisible weight. Mom looked at Dad, her eyes pleading him to speak. That's when I knew something was off. Ethan, we need to talk about that, Dad finally said, his voice unusually shaky. Jake's been in some legal trouble, and we had to use the money to bail him out. It was the only way to keep him out of jail. The words hit me like a freight train. You used my college fund? All of it? My voice cracked the plans I had meticulously laid out starting to crumble. It wasn't an easy decision, Ethan. We thought we could replenish it before you needed it, Mom chimed in, her voice soft, trying to smooth over the sharp edges of their betrayal. How could you do this without even asking me? That fund was for my future. The frustration and sense of betrayal boiled over. It wasn't just about the money. It was about trust, about my future which they gambled away as if it was nothing. Son, we're your parents. We thought we were doing the best thing for the family. We promise we'll fix this. We'll find a way to help you with your college expenses. You've always said we were a team, but it feels like you're always team, Jake. What about me? What about my dreams? The hurt was overwhelming, and it was clear that my dreams were secondary to bailing out Jake over and over we are sorry, Ethan. Truly we are. We'll make it right. Mom's voice was almost a whisper, her eyes moist with unshed tears. As I stormed off to my room, their promises echoed hollowly behind me. That night I lay awake, staring at the ceiling, my mind racing. If I was going to make my dreams a reality, it was clear I'd have to do it on my own. This betrayal wouldn't define me. It would propel me. From that moment on, I vowed to succeed, no matter what it took. My journey was just beginning, and I was ready to face it head on. Next day, I took my decision to leave the home and start from scratch. I began to start multiple jobs part-time to save for my study. Several months later, I could start my study while working. It was past midnight, and while most of my classmates were probably asleep, my night was just getting started with a coding project due in the morning. Ethan, are you coming to the study group tonight? We're reviewing for the midterms. My roommate Mike asked, poking his head around the corner. Can't. I've got a shift at the cafe early in the morning, then straight to my internship, then classes. I'll catch up on studying tonight, I replied, my eyes never leaving the screen. Man, you're always working. Don't you ever take a break? Mike's concern was genuine, but he didn't understand the full weight of my situation. Breaks are a luxury I can't afford. I said, with a half-smile, trying to lighten the mood. The next morning, after pulling yet another all-nighter, I was behind the counter at the cafe, brewing coffee and managing sleepy morning customers. The smell of roasted coffee beans was a stark contrast to the sterile electronics I dealt with in class. This was my reality, juggling work and school with no financial safety net. Ethan, another double espresso on the double, my boss, Mrs. Parker, called out snapping me back to the task at hand. Yes, ma'am, I responded, my hands automatically working on the order. This job was a far cry from software engineering, but every dollar helped me edge closer to my degree. Later that day, during a rare break, I called home. I needed to touch base, hoping maybe things had changed, or at least to feel a part of the family again. Hey, Mom, how's everything? How's Jake? I tried to keep the conversation light, but I needed to know. Oh, Ethan, we're just dealing with another one of Jake's messes. Your father and I had to cover his rent this month. You know how it is, Mom sighed on the other end. I gritted my teeth, feeling the familiar sting of frustration. 
Yeah, I know how it is, I replied, the words heavy with unspoken accusations. We miss you, Ethan. We just want you to come home sometimes, you know? I miss you too, Mom. But you know I've got to do this on my own. It's important to me, I said, feeling both the distance and my resolve deepen. The phone call ended with promises to visit, but we both knew my schedule wouldn't allow it. As I hung up, I felt the weight of my choices. Choosing this path meant long nights, endless work, and sacrificing the comfort of family support. But with each job, each class, each project, I was building something more valuable than anything my college fund could have bought me, my independence and self-resilience. That night, as I returned to my dorm to face another project deadline, I was not just working towards my degree. I was proving to myself, and maybe to my family, that I could make it on my own terms. This journey was mine, forged from betrayal, but heading towards a future I was determined to shape. Five years out of college, I sat in my well-appointed office at a leading tech company. My nameplate reading, Ethan, Senior Developer, prominently displayed on the desk. The late afternoon sun cast long shadows across the room as I reviewed lines of code on dual monitors. The sharp ping of my phone broke the concentration. Dad's name flashed on the screen. Hey, Dad, what's up? Everything okay? I answered, my voice mixed with anticipation and caution. Ethan, your mother and I need to talk to you about something important. Can you come by this weekend? Dad's voice was tense, a familiar unease settling in the pit of my stomach. Sure, I'll swing by. Is it about Jake? I prodded, bracing myself for what I suspected was coming. The weekend visit felt like stepping back in time. Sitting at the kitchen table, where I'd done my homework years ago, the same table where they told me about the college fund. Mom and Dad exchanged nervous glances. Ethan, we're in a bit of a bind. Jake's gotten himself into trouble again, and we've maxed out helping him. We need a, uh, loan. $50,000 should cover it, Dad finally said his voice a mix of embarrassment and desperation. I felt the room spin slightly as old wounds tore open. You're asking me for money? After everything with the college fund? Son, we wouldn't ask if it weren't serious. He's your brother, Mom interjected, her voice pleading. Jake has been nothing but a black hole for your support, and you've let him be one, and now you want me to fund that? My voice rose with each word, the betrayal fresh as if it were yesterday. Ethan, we're family. Sometimes family needs to help each other out in tough times, Dad reasoned. Helping is one thing, enabling is another. I worked my tail off to get where I am because you chose to bail out Jake instead of supporting my education. I learned to be self-reliant. It's time he did the same, I countered, my resolve hardening. Ethan, please, we're begging. Don't turn your back on us now. Mom's eyes were brimming with tears. Turning my back felt like the hardest thing I'd ever do. This isn't just about money, it's about a pattern, one that you continue to support. I'm sorry, but I can't help you, not this way. The drive home was long and silent, my mind a whirlwind of emotions. I had stood my ground, but at what cost? The rift between us felt wider than ever, but deep down I knew that breaking these toxic patterns was the only way to truly help Jake, and myself. The rest of the evening was spent in contemplation, the decision weighing heavily on me. Yet, amidst the turmoil, there was a newfound strength in standing up for what I believed was right, even if it meant standing alone. The buzz in the tech community was electric as I walked onto the stage at a major industry conference to announce the launch of the Ethan Scholarship Fund. My heart pounded with a mix of pride and nervous anticipation. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm here today not just as a software engineer, but as someone who believes deeply in the power of education, the Ethan Scholarship Fund will provide financial assistance to students who, like myself, have faced significant financial barriers to their education, I declared, the crowd nodding and clapping in support. After the announcement, at the networking event, I was approached by an array of industry professionals and journalists, each eager to discuss the scholarship fund. Ethan, what inspired you to start this scholarship? A reporter asked, her recorder poised. I know firsthand how tough it can be to fund your own education. I believe no one should have to choose between their dreams and financial reality, I explained, the memories of my own struggles lending sincerity to my words. 
The article hit the newspapers the next day, and the reactions poured in. My phone was abuzz with notifications and calls, some from strangers praising my initiative, and some from colleagues who wanted to contribute. At a family gathering a few weeks later, the topic inevitably came up. Mom and Dad were there, and the air was thick with unspoken words from our last encounter. Ethan, we read about your scholarship fund. It's a generous thing you're doing, Mom said, her tone careful, a hint of reservation lingering in her voice. Dad chimed in, it's a lot of money to give away, Ethan. Are you sure it's the best use of your resources? Helping others succeed is absolutely the best use of my resources. This isn't just about money. It's about giving opportunities to those who are where I once was, I replied, firm yet hoping they'd understand my need to make a difference. My Aunt Lucy, who had always been supportive, smiled warmly at me. I think it's wonderful what you're doing, Ethan. You're turning your past struggles into hope for others. The room was divided, some relatives nodding in agreement with Lucy, others siding with my parents, whispering about the practicalities of such generosity. As the discussion faded into dinner conversations, I felt a quiet satisfaction. Despite the mixed reactions, starting the scholarship was a testament to my journey, a way to transform my experiences into something positive that could help others. This was my way of rewriting the narrative. From a past marred by financial betrayal to a future where I could be part of someone else's solution. Months after launching the Ethan Scholarship Fund, I was back at my parents' house for a routine Sunday dinner. The atmosphere was lighter than it had been in years, and I sensed a shift even before anyone spoke. Jake was there, looking more composed than I'd seen him in a long time. As we settled around the table, Dad cleared his throat, signaling he had something important to say. Ethan, your mother and I have been talking a lot lately. We've seen what you've accomplished with your scholarship fund, and we're proud of you. We realize now how wrong we were to use your college fund the way we did. Mom nodded, taking over with a gentle sincerity in her eyes. Yes, Ethan, we're truly sorry for the pain we caused. Seeing you help others has opened our eyes to the mistakes we made with you and Jake. Jake then turned to me, an unusual seriousness to his demeanor. And I... I owe you an apology too, Ethan. I've started taking responsibility for my actions. I'm in a program now, working on getting better and fixing my own messes. I'm also volunteering, trying to give back in my own way. The words were unexpected and they resonated deeply. I took a moment before responding, the weight of their admissions sinking in. Thank you, all of you. It means a lot to hear you say that. What I've built with the scholarship fund wasn't just for me, it's for all those who struggle like I did. Dinner proceeded with a new warmth and the conversation turned to the students the scholarship would help. My family was genuinely interested, asking questions, and even offering suggestions. Later that evening, I stood alone in my old room, now a guest room, looking out at the quiet street. The journey here hadn't been easy, but it was mine, and I had forged a path that not only led to my own success, but would pave the way for others. Reflecting on everything, I realized the importance of self-reliance and the satisfaction of breaking toxic family patterns. I had turned the betrayal of my past into the bedrock of my future, ensuring that the cycle ended with me. This wasn't just reconciliation, it was growth, a testament to the strength of character and the enduring hope that we can change, not just for ourselves, but for each other. This story of mine, a tale of resilience, teaches that even the deepest wounds can heal, and from them we can emerge stronger and more determined to forge a better future. Thank you for following along. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts below. Have you faced similar challenges? How did you overcome them? Let's discuss in the comments. That's the end of Ethan's story, but the conversation doesn't have to stop here. How would you have handled the situation if your family had used your college fund? Would you have offered the loan to help out later, or stood your ground like Ethan? Drop your thoughts in the comments below, and let's get a discussion going. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more stories like this. Your support helps us keep sharing and growing together.